Delano Banton came out of seemingly nowhere to get drafted and then have a really impressive summer league. So what can Toronto fans expect from their first ever Canadian draft pick? This is Florence Ceiling. Let's break him down. Even getting drafted seemed like a long shot at first for Delano Banton. Banton was a late addition to the G League draft combine, and after an eye-opening showing there, he was drafted at 46 by the Toronto Raptors. With that, he became the first ever Canadian player to be selected by Toronto. At 6'9", 194 pounds with a 6'10 wingspan, Banton has the size of a 4 but really should be considered a 1. After more impressive performances in the Summer League, Banton could prove to be a steal. With Delano Banton, we have to start with his passing. Like I said moments ago, Banton is a point guard. He does not look like one or measure up as one, but he is every bit of a floor general. Banton is an extremely skilled passer as I will get into, but one thing that really stands out to me about his playmaking is his ability to create for others out of a live dribble. Banton has a tight, fluid handle at 6'9 that gives him an advantage over most of his defenders. Once he gets moving, Banton has no problems finding his teammates. He keeps control of the ball, plays with his head up, and is able to make some genuinely creative reads. Watch here as Banton rejects the screen, goes the other way, beats his man with his handle, and then executes the tough wraparound pass. Or here, Banton uses the screen to get downhill, gets into the paint, and slices up the defense with this kick out for a wide open three. Banton averaged 4 assists per game in his only season at Nebraska, and 3 assists per game in the Summer League. Those are not numbers that necessarily stand out, but I choose to focus more on his reads and execution at 6'9". Banton has also shown flashes of being comfortable in the pick and roll. Now that we've established that he is a willing, capable, and creative passer, I think it's important to go back to his size. I liked the poise that Banton operated with out of screens. He took his time and didn't get bothered too much, finding his teammates on the wings or under the basket. This is a good example of Banton generating a look from 3. However, one thing I do really want to highlight again is that Banton is always going to have an intrinsic advantage because of his height. He can see over defenses, he can find angles that smaller players cannot, and that can only be a good thing. Watch this pass here, Banton brings the ball up, gets the drag screen, and then has no problems passing over 6'8 Reggie Perry to create the dunk. Something that I've touched on a few times while referring to Banton's passing is his handle. And yes, this is yet another very important part of his game. In the long term, I have no real concerns about his handle. Banton is not necessarily the most dynamic ball handler, but he keeps the ball close to his body in my opinion and gets to his spots. It is precisely because of his handle that Banton has the means to be a big threat in grab-and-go situations. The Canadian guard covers tons of ground with his long strides and gets from one end of the floor to the other very quickly. Watch this clip as he pushes the ball, freezes his man with the hezzy, and gets fouled going for the poster. Banton can start and finish attacks, such as here. He ends up with the ball, leads the fast break, and then eventually finishes the putback. Still, I do want to see Banton continue to work on his handle. He can get up and down without too many problems, but he has to get better at creating separation for himself. Banton cannot chain together too many moves, so he is not that creative with the ball. Additionally, smaller defenders can also get underneath him and bother him, such as here. Passing-wise, I said earlier that I did not have too many concerns. That still applies, but it is also true that Banton averaged more turnovers than assists in the Summer League. Now, this was a 5 game sample so we cannot read too much into it, but Banton had two really tough games, his first one and his last one. He combined for 10 total turnovers, sort of skewing that statistic a little. However, Banton at times was too casual with the ball. He did not take care of it like you would expect from a point guard and had some sloppy, avoidable turnovers. He will need to cut down on those for sure. Here, Banton's turnover leads to a really easy two points for the New York Knicks. Now, let's get into Banton's scoring, which is very much still a work in progress. 
Stats do not always tell you everything, but I think points per game is pretty spot on for Banton. He put up about 8 points and 9 points a night in the Summer League and at Nebraska respectively. This part of the game does not come easily to Banton. A big reason for that is his complete inability to play through contact. Banton is a rail thin 194 pounds, which clearly plays a role, but his struggles are almost comical. It's not like Banton tries to take it into a big's chest and simply cannot finish. It's that any semblance of contact or having to finish in traffic really hurts him. At times, he tries to compensate for this, but gets out of control. This clip here shows Banton's difficulties finishing. Or again, the Raptors rookie just cannot find a way to score here. Banton shot an abysmal 36% from the field in Summer League action. At Nebraska, he actually converted 62% of his shots at the rim. But this was not any significant sample size, and it's also worth mentioning that Banton's problems scoring were also on display at the G League Elite Camp. I think that the step up to becoming a consistent finisher at the NBA level is going to be really noticeable for him. Getting stronger as well as more confident in the paint will be key, because as I will break down in a bit, defenses are likely going to sag off of him at first. That is why developing an in-between game will be crucial for Banton. Right now, this part of his offense is very inconsistent. As you can probably tell, right now Banton does not have soft touch. He has an unorthodox floater that can honestly lead to some pretty ugly misses. I'm not entirely sure how fixable this is long term, but ideally you want Banton's in-between game to resemble these clips, rather than the previous ones. Even this floater against Vern Carey is unorthodox, but at least it's going in. Banton's finishing is interesting, because strength issues aside, there's no reason he should have struggled as much. Like I said earlier, he covers a lot of ground with his long strides, his length helps him come up with angles around the rim, and he is an alright although not great vertical athlete. The Raptors need to find a way to tap into these tools. If that means plenty of time in the G League or not playing while he develops, so be it, and in fact, this is probably the likeliest outcome. Ideally, I want to see something like this. Banton is switched onto Usman Garuba, freezes him with the Hezi before the blow-by, and then extends to finish. Like I said earlier though, teams are going to sag off of Banton for the foreseeable future. Why? Because he is a total non-shooter for all intents and purposes. Banton did not make a single 3 in his 5 Summer League games. He went 0 from 12 from the perimeter, and as you can see in these clips, it's not like his shot just was not going in. Banton has struggled with his pull-up ever since it's mattered. In addition to his 0 threes made, Banton only made 41% of his free throws. In college, Banton shot 22% from 3 as a freshman at Western Kentucky. He followed that with 25% at Nebraska, and his free throw average was a horrible 63%. At the end of the day, we tend to go back to the same question with these big guard type prospects. Sure, they can pass really well and create for others, but those advantages are nullified if they just cannot shoot the ball at all. Right now, this is undoubtedly the case for Banton. I worry about this because the sample size over the years is big enough to be able to tell that he needs major work on his shot. Banton does not need to become a lights out 3 point shooter, but he at least needs to be respectable, especially if he's going to struggle finishing at the rim so much. Defensively, Delano Banton had a pretty solid summer league. The first thing to point out is his length. Not only does he cover ground with his strides, but his wingspan at over 6 foot 10 is a genuine difference maker. Banton is long, yes, but he knows how to use that length to disrupt attackers. I was a big fan of this possession right here. Banton first stays attached to deny the handoff, after that he stays in the play, but also while keeping an eye on where his man is, and finally he comes over to help and gets the steal. Or here, Banton again makes a big defensive play, gets the ball back for Toronto, and gets the and one on the leak out. In an organization like Toronto where defensive development is a big focal point, I expect Banton's defense to only get better over time. But right now, this end of the floor is already a strength for him, in my opinion. Banton's length also plays into his defensive versatility, which is one of my favorite things about him. Simply put, Banton is very switchable. He puts together all of the things we've mentioned so far. The size, the length, the mobility, the quick hands, and projects as a genuinely switchable defender. I enjoyed how the Raptors used Banton on this end of the floor in the Summer League. 
he was constantly challenged, often multiple times during the same game. For example, you'll see him guard Jonathan Kaminga against Golden State, but then also have to defend Kyle Guy, or he can even check Moses Moody if need be. That's pretty much 1-4. through four. Banton typically plays with great energy on this side of the basketball. Banton got down in a stance, played tough despite giving up weight, and always did his best to stay engaged. With the job that the Raptors have done with OG Ananobi or Pascal Siakam, I cannot wait to see what Banton morphs into defensively. Watch here as Banton picks up the 6'3 Emmanuel quickly in transition, keeps up with him, stays down on the fake, and gets the block. But at the same time, he's also able to pick up the bigger Kai Jones and force him to turn the ball over on the drive. I'm also curious about Banton's potential protecting the rim. Like I will get into in a few moments, I think he still has to develop in this area, but the tools are there for sure. Banton averaged about a block and a half per game in the summer league. Again, small sample size and he did not reach those figures in college, but he has the understanding and pop to make a difference. If we want to use Ben Simmons as a generic comparison for big, tall guards, then rim protection is the one defensive tool that he is still really missing. Should Banton add that, the potential is scary. Of course though, this is all a bit idealistic. As for shortcomings, there really weren't that many that are worrying in the long term. If anything, Banton was a bit too eager at times to make a difference. That meant that maybe he trusted his length and recovery skills too much sometimes. Or other times, he would be a little too jumpy to try to make a defensive play. Still, these things are all natural, particularly for a rookie who is still relatively early in his development. As with anything and anyone, there will be elements to iron out, but overall, I am very optimistic about Banton's defensive potential. Alright, so I think that drafting Delano Banton is fascinating on multiple levels by the Raptors. And the first one that we should really get back to, and I know that we've covered a lot of ground in this video, almost as much ground as Banton himself covers on the court, but I really do want to highlight and emphasize what type of player he is. Now, you can call this position the one, the point guard, the primary ball handler, whatever it is, but I really don't think that Banton is a point forward. I think you want the ball in his hands a lot of the time, you want him running the pick and roll, you want him getting downhill, finding people on the move, which he is very very good at. And I don't think that you would really get the same benefits from him if you just put him, you know, at the four, you give him a ball handling possession once in a while, maybe you know he's operating out of short rolls, things of that nature. I think that really he needs the ball in his hands. And that, when he gets that, he is at his best. He can find cutters, he can find wings, he can find bigs, he can generate good looks from three, and he can do a little bit of everything in terms of playmaking. Now, offensively, where everything sort of goes awry for Banton, obviously, is with his shot, and generally, it's with his scoring. He will have to get a lot better at finishing at the rim at the NBA level. And yes, the Summer League was a small sample size, but I do think that the signs were worrying. Of course, the three-pointer, like I said in the video, is pretty much a non-factor for now. A couple days ago, there was actually a really interesting piece on The Athletic about Scotty Barnes, um, you know, Banton's teammate right now. And something that stood out to me was how at one point, I believe one of his ex-coaches is sort of explaining that, you know, if you were to grade a prospect, you know, let's say their ball handling ability, right? Like you grade it from 1 to 10, or in this case, it was like from 1 to 5. So at the AAU level or at the high school level, Barnes was maybe, you know, a 4 out of 5 when it came to ball handling. But when it came to college and the NBA, maybe he would be a 3 out of 5 or an 8 out of 10 rather than a 9 out of 10. Something like that. And I think that it is very likely that Banton might go through something like this. At lower levels of competition, Banton was probably, you know, a 4 out of 5 when it comes to ball handling. A 4 out of 5 when it comes to finding gaps in defenses. And in the Summer League, he did really well. But again, you know, he's playing against Summer League players. He's playing against guys who are trying to find their way into the NBA. Guys who, like him, might be rookies or, you know, sophomores. So I think that there will be a bit of an adjustment curve. I think that although Banton right now, he is quite good at guard skills for someone of his size, he will need to continue ironing those things out. Tightening his handle, making sure that you know he cuts out all the careless passes, things of that nature. And once he gets those things down, then absolutely I do think that he can be a guard in the NBA. 
The second thing that I want to touch on, and I'll make it quick because I know that this video is getting long, but the Raptors are sort of accumulating the same type of player. And this is something that we sort of see around the NBA in terms of getting, you know, these guys that are 6'8", 6'9", 6'10", can handle, can pass. Maybe they can't exactly shoot, but they can defend and you kind of hope that their shot gets there eventually. The Raptors are stockpiling this type of prospect. And we saw this in this year's draft, it was really apparent. I mean, Scotty Barnes, Delano Banton, David Johnson later as well. You've got other guys, you know, on the Summer League team who are comparable, even Precious Achua. So I think it's very fascinating what the Raptors are doing. And clearly, they feel like the future of basketball is headed in this direction. Right now, let's see where that goes. We've seen so far, you know, over the last, you know, five, six, seven years, shooting has been the premium skill in the NBA. The Raptors right now, they've drafted a lot of guys who can do a lot of good things, but the one thing that they really cannot do is shoot. So I'm very curious to see how that pans out, how the evolution of the game continues to go, and whether or not the Raptors are indeed ahead of the curve. Finally, I want to thank you guys for your patience. I know that last week there was no video, some things got in the way of that, and unfortunately I wasn't able to get this video up. It's up this week, I really enjoyed doing this, so if you enjoyed the video as much as I did, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think of Delano Banton and what the Raptors did in the draft, and as always, if you enjoy the channel, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.